So we're finally back from the bye week and man, <laughs> what a bye week it was. Things are looking kind of different at St. Thomas Sports Park, a whole lot different. Get in here, get comfy. Welcome to Front of Cheap Seats. Hey, welcome back. I'm glad to have you. I'm your host, Bonafide, and this is From the Cheap Seats, the show where we preview and recap every Tennessee Titans game from this season. Now, every week we're going to be previewing the game and then recapping it after the game is over. But this week we got a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it and not waste any time. So this week we are playing the Falcons. Yes, the Atlanta Falcons, who currently lead the NFC South uh, by beating the Bucks last week in a, with a field goal uh, in like at the last second. So it was a game-winning field goal. They beat the Bucks. It was a strange game because B. John Robinson, their star rookie, he was available, but he didn't get no snaps. And he was basically a non-factor in that game. But it looks like the NFL is looking into it. Maybe he had a headache or an illness that the Falcons didn't disclose until later on. But I don't think that's going to play a part because uh, reports came out and said that he was fine uh, this week. So he should be good to go. And he's not on the injury point, but we'll talk about it later. Uh, so <laughs> you could call the, Titan, the, the, the Falcons Titan South because they got a lot of former Titans on there. They got our former offensive coordinator, tight ends coach, Arthur Smith down there. Now he's the head coach there, been there for a couple of seasons. They got John New Smith. They got Miko Pruitt. Remember Miko Pruitt? Yeah, got him down there. <laughs> got Bud Dupree <laughs> down there too. Uh, they got Desmond Ritter as their quarterback. And I saw somebody on Twitter call him Diet Marcus Mariota. <laughs> Those are not my words, but hey, man. <laughs> It, it, it is kind of funny. Uh, and Marcus was there last year. Now he's with the he's with uh, Titans North, a.k.a. the Philadelphia Eagles. So, yeah. Now, they run a running back by committee. They got Algier and they got Robinsons. And they got weapons at the pass catcher uh, position. They got Drake London, who we talked about in that last video. Uh, and they got Pitts, Kyle Pitts, uh, from, who was from Florida, the dynamic tight end. They got Mac Hollins, the guy with the big puffy hair, long hair. And they're all capable pass catchers, you know, for, for Desmond Ritter. Now, let's let's get into it and talk about it from there. The Titans last week, we all know we talked about it in this video. Uh, is it over here? It's over there. In this video, uh, talked about how we traded Kevin Byard to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, so our difference, our defensive secondary is definitely going to look a, a, a tad bit different. Uh, now, we picked up Terrell Edmonds in the trade uh, with the Eagles, but we also picked up Kayvon Wallace off of waivers. I think he's from he was from the Cardinals, uh, which is, you know, where we get all our picks and trades and everything from, it seems like, from the Cardinals. So uh, uh, we picked him up, Kayvon Wallace, so he's in there. I don't think he's going to... I, honest, he might be on special teams, but I don't think he's going to play anything because he's just now coming over, picking up the defense, so like that. So, um, you know, these other safeties, I think Elijah Molden is going to be the other safety starting beside Amani Hooker, and they're, you know, they're going to have the job of kind of replacing Kevin Byard, you know, the mayor of Murfreesboro. They're going to have to work to do that. Um, and also, we learned that MPF is now the starting left tackle. So that means Andre Dillard is the backup. So or benched, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so will we see improved protection? Now, we saw some glimmers of that in the Ravens game. You know, obviously, you know, he needs reps at that position because he's, he was a right tackle before we got Hubbard and now he's the left tackle. So will we see any improvements in that? So the other big news that dropped this week about the Titans is that it looks like a report from Ian Rappaport uh, came out saying that Will Levis is going to be the starter until Tannehill is back. So I was wrong in thinking that they would, you know, kind of do this as a showcase for both quarterbacks, give him a leak two to three games and Willis, whatever games that he needed to kind of see who would be the quarterback moving forward. But it looks like from all accounts and purposes, what we're hearing from practice report, Will Willis is going to be the backup and Levis is going to be the starter. So now we're going to see the rookie out of Kentucky. Now, we'll talk about this later, but Mike Vrabel mentioned that both quarterbacks would play this game. And I, I think it's gamesmanship, really, honestly, from Mike Vrabel. I think it's just like a whole bunch of gamesmanship. Um, but, you know, Will, 
no pun intended, the line be able to protect Levis uh, uh, long enough for him to showcase this quick release that we've been seeing in videos and that we've talked about a lot. Um, so that that is another big news. Now, on a lighter note, this is homecoming week for the for, for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, we're playing a home game against the Falcons, and over 170 former Oilers and Titans players will be in attendance to the game. And yes, we are finally, finally wearing the Oilers throwbacks. Oh man, look, they've been wearing the helmets. It's so clean. I cannot wait for this game. Look, you know, it's, as you can tell, I'm all, I'm already ready. I'm already ready. Now, later on in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can win your own custom Oilers throwback jersey uh, 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 via being a subscriber to the channel in our Road to 1K giveaway. Now, let's get to the uh, injury report. Who's in and who's out? Now, other than Tannehill and Josh Wild, who's still dealing with the concussion, um, the only new entry on the, the injury report is Roger McCreary with a hamstring, which is definitely concerning given the need that we, you know, the secondary isn't the best and our pass defense, you know, we need all the good cornerbacks that we can get. So we gotta kinda monitor that. Basically, definitely gotta look at, you know, who's inactive on that. You know, we later on today, on Friday, we'll get that final injury report. And if uh, if he's if he's out, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to, you know, see some, some players step up. Um, Tart should be back. So it should help our defensive front, uh, which we'll definitely need. And Burks is scheduled to come back with no limitations from the knee. So another pass catcher for whoever the quarterback is going to be on Sunday. Let us. Um, but the Falcons are relatively healthy. You know, the only person that they don't have that's practicing is uh, their linebacker, Tay Davis, with a concussion. So they're way more healthier than us, things like that. So moving on to this next segment, um, Levis, QB1. Or is he? I had, so like after six games, they reportedly decided to, you know, go turn the reins over to Will Levis. Now, we know what Mike said, but I think, you know, they finally started hearing the cries for him to, to start and they're going to answer it. Now, it's, you know me, this is my fan channel. This is my channel. This is how I feel. It's not my first choice, but it seems like they're going to give, let him be the quarterback until Tannehill is healthy enough. Now, you hear what I'm saying? He's going to be the guy until they say Tannehill is healthy and then they're going to put Tannehill back in there. Now, I know a lot of people on Twitter and things like that will use their college fandom to determine whether or not they like players in the NFL. Me being a Tennessee Volunteer fan has nothing to do with what I think should happen with the Titans. You know, shoot, I'm probably one of the only black people you know that like mayo. So <laughs> I ain't talking about Miracle Whip. Talking about mayonnaise, mayonnaise. I like it on my sandwiches. But um, I just don't think we saw enough of him in the preseason to kind of really make any decisions. So this is like, like remember, he he was alternating those snap, snaps with uh, Willis that first that first game, uh, and then he he never played in the preseason anymore because of a quad injury. He got help. He's he's past that. He's over that. He's been working, taking reps and snaps and all of that good stuff. But like we just don't know anything about it. we saw what we saw i mean and they were pretty equal um time to throw was the same uh freaking they i think they took the same amount of sacks that preseason game when they were alternating series so this is his first real game action so um <laughs> it, it is it's wild because um you know he's gonna go out here and, and he's you know and this is what we consider a very winnable game now, we're gonna take this all with a caveat based off of what Mike says, but look, you know, there's only like, there's only a few things that can happen here. A lot of people were, are in, out, lukewarm, whatever, and they're pointing to all sorts of things why we believe we should start Will Levis. You know, Willis hasn't proven anything. Willis is not an NFL quarterback, da 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 da. At the end of the day, there's no point in crying about that now. It is what it is. Whoever starts on Sunday is who's gonna start. And if it's Levis, it's Levis. We need to win this game if we are going to get back on the right ship uh I, I, you know and they believe the coaches believe that levis is going to give us the best chance to win this game even though mike is saying that both we need both quarterbacks to win i mike is confusing me so i, I don't even want to really talk about that right now but you know i don't really buy it right now but you know i'll save my comments until he has had enough you know game take then we can really think about it things like that uh the best case scenario for the titans is that you know levis is good he, he is everything that everybody says 
they thought he would be because he played in a pro offense in, 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 in at Kentucky. And he's translated over here and he is the guy. He's able to lead us to some wins to the point where they say, hey, you know, Levis is doing all right. I don't think we're going to put Tannehill back in there. That would be best. And he looks like a franchise Kobe. Oh, that would be great for the Tennessee Titans because then we could take this new draft this 2024 draft and this almost $100 million in cap space that we have and utilize that at other areas of need, like linebacker, or offensive lineman, you know, or defensive backs. All of that we can use and we can build around him. And then we can finally say, hey, we have some stability at the quarterback. We've got a young, you know, quarterback thing to do that. So now that's the best case scenario. Now, the worst case scenario which some people would think is also a good option, is that he isn't good. And he is he does nothing to separate himself from uh, Tannehill and or Willis. And they stick Tannehill back in there and we continue to lose games and we're picking top five in the 24-24 draft. And we're looking at one of these quarterbacks like Phoenix Jr. or, or Caleb Williams, uh, even if we have a shot to do that, um, to be the next quarterback that we take a shot on. So, um, it is really time only tell. We have to see what happens on Sunday. So Sunday is going to be a very interesting game for more than just throwbacks and things like that. So remember I'm telling you, you like this jersey, right? This is the dope jersey. I am about to tell you how you can enter in a contest free of charge. No, it's not gonna cost you anything. Not gonna cost you anything to be able to win your own, very own custom Nike Tennessee Titans Oilers throwback jersey. So. We have hit 500 subs and all you and in the next couple of days, we're going to be coming up with uh, more details on how to end the contest. But it's simple. Just be a subscriber of this channel. Share this with your friends and your name and your will be entered into the contest. And once we hit 1000 subs, we'll do a drawing out of all of our subscribers for this jersey, for your custom jersey. Um, when we hit 750, we're going to do a little small giveaway for our, all of our subscribers up to 750. So you have an opportunity to possibly win twice if the, the odds are ever in your favor. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you turn your notification bell on so you can be notified of any new videos that we drop because we, we may make one specifically talking about the giveaway. Now, my closing thoughts. You know, Mike Vrabel has some crazy stat where he is 5-0. and oh. Now, we're not calling the playoff loss. Uh, out coming off that bye, but he's 5-0 in the regular season when coming off a bye week, which is crazy when you think about it, meaning that when Mike Vrabel gets a bye, he's almost guaranteed to win that next game. Uh, and like I said again, this feels like a winnable game for the Titans. Now, Ritter is known to give you a turnover to uh, this game, so th there's an opportunity for the defense to get the ball back for the offense, maybe on a shorter field where we can turn that, you know, that turnover into points. The unknown in this game, which has been the unknown in a lot of these games, is what kind of offense are we going to see? Uh, will it be one where they just hand the ball off to Derek 30 times and like they did in Malik's first start? Or will they open up the playbook and let him throw the ball uh, to these pass catchers down the field and make some plays? We literally do not know <laughs> what is going to happen here. So like I said, this is going to be a very interesting game. Now, here's my prediction for the game. I feel like with all the veterans coming back, all the old Oilers greats coming back and Titans greats coming back, I feel like that's going to give a boost to the team to, to really play to this game. Uh, I feel like Derek and Nick Folk are going to get a lot of work this Sunday. Uh, Spears too. I think Spears is going to get a lot of work. Uh, I feel like Ritter is going to give the ball back to us late in the game and that is how we're going to be able to win it and kind of close this game out uh definitely winning off the legs of henry and folk and you know we kind of get a little vantage point in what we can see from will levis if he plays a significant part of the game but we get the victory in the throw bikes 20 to 13. so tune into the next episode where we talk and recap this game and what happened and, and how if we won or if we lost and what's going on from there uh but so don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and you know tell your other titans friends about it because right let me say we're over 500 stuff so the kickoff to the road to 1k giveaway is on is already started so hey don't you don't want to miss out possibly could get one of these fresh jerseys hey who, and who doesn't like a throwback? All right. Until then, tighten up.